Hey everyone, hopefully gonna have a quick-ish video today. Um, let's show you quickly how to set up Yuzu or Ryujinx, depending on which one you want to use. Um, I would recommend having them both kind of ready to go and then using them based on a game by game basis. But anyway, so you want to install Windows for obviously for the Ally or Linux or whatever, depending on what you're on. But this will serve as like kind of an Ally Windows tutorial, but it will still apply the same kind of setup process. Um, and then over on Yuzu, same thing, you'll download the mainline build. Now there is the Yuzu Early Access build. You can get that through their Patreon as well. Um, and then they'll give you like a little token that you can put it in the Yuzu and then it'll auto update to the Yuzu Early Access and stuff. But we'll just focus on just regular Yuzu. So once you have those downloaded, um, what you're going to want to do is they'll download into your download folder, uh, put them wherever you like. Um, for this purpose, I'm just putting them on the desktop. And what you're going to do is go into, we'll do uh, Yuzu first, because Yuzu is, well, not easier, it's the same, It's they're both easy. Uh, but anyway, so we'll go into Yuzu, so they'll be like this, Ryujinx 1 point whatever your version is, and then Yuzu Windows. So we'll go into Yuzu, uh, go into Yuzu again, and then scroll down until you see Yuzu. So there we go. Now, the first time you set this up, you will get like a little pop-up message saying, hey, you haven't set up your keys, your firmware, or whatever. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Mine's already been set up, but it's still the same process. So to get to your file, you can just hit file and then go to open Yuzu folder. And then that will take you to your local uh, Yuzu folder place where you need to put in your uh, keys and firmware. So I can't show you where to get the keys and firmware, but I'll show you what they look like. Um, sorry, I'm using a wireless kind of like touchpad mouse and it's not really that great. Um, so anyway, so your keys are going to look a little something like this. Uh, I did have the folder open. There we go. So we'll do the firmware first. So to do firmware for Yuzu, it's located in, uh, sys or sorry, NAND, uh, system, contents, and then registered. And then you'll copy over, this is what the firmware file looks like. Or files, sorry. So you'll copy all of them over into that folder, and then that's no problem, you're good to go there. And then we'll go back to the main Yuzu folder. And then it's just right in keys. So all you have to do is just go to keys, and then copy over your keys to, uh, folder. Uh, just the files into the folder. So we'll go into my keys file here, and then this is that's the same thing, so that's what the keys are. And then what you're going to want to do is just close down Yuzu and then open it back up and then you should be good to go. Now to add in um, a game library, all you have to do is just hit add new game directory. Double click add new game directory, sorry. Um, and then you're just going to basically direct it to whatever file you want. So if you want it on your SD card, my SD card is called Windex. So I'll just go to Windex. I already have one directed here. Uh, just as ROMs there and then you just hit select folder and then I'm not going to hit select folder again And then here you go. It shows your folders there You can have multiple folders set up and then you can collapse them So it's not all cluttered but wherever you want to keep them if you want to keep some on your uh, SD card or if you want to keep some on the the SSD itself or wherever um, and then yeah after that you're all set up and ready to go um, a few recommendations I would make would be to just go to uh, emulation and then configure and then what you're going to want to do here is just kind of set like your global kind of stuff. So normally I do find CPU being set to unsafe does give a little bit better performance in some of the heavier uh, Nintendo Switch games. But leave it on auto and then just play with that setting like on a game by game basis. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to leave VSync on. Um, you're going to want to leave it at whatever resolution scaling you want. Um, I would recommend leaving it at one times, unless you're kind of running like a lighter, easier to run game, then you could kick up the resolution, but you can do that, um, on a game by game basis as well. Uh, so the global settings, just leave FXAA on for anti-aliasing. That's usually okay. Um, if you get any weird, like kind of jagged weirdness on, along like textures or whatever, or like outlines of characters and stuff, turn it off. Cause it might be conflicting with the internal, uh, games rent, uh, anti-aliasing. Um, there is typically mods to like disable it though. Like in the case of Tears of the Kingdom, there's a FXA disable and FSR disable mod. Um, and then so going into advanced, I would set the accuracy level to normal. I believe it defaults to high, but I did find at least in the case of Tears of the Kingdom, like having it in high performance tanked. 
and for other games as well in my light testing. So I would set that globally to normal. And then also I would leave enable async presentation on. I wouldn't force your max clocks. Um, I would not leave decode ASTC on because that does introduce some texture glitches I found. Uh, leave enable reactive flushing on. Uh, typically I would advise disabling the fast GPU time hack. Um, this, uh, especially if you're using mods like 60 FPS mods and stuff, uh, I find that a lot of the mods call for you to disable that. So I would just disable it from the start. And then on again, on a game by game basis, I would enable it as you go. Um, and also you want to enable async shader building. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's pretty much like your global, global settings there. And then to set up your controls, what you're going to want to do, this will be set to uh, whatever you want. So you can set it to a Joy-Con, but what you're going to want to do is leave it as a Pro Controller because that'll mimic your Xbox controller, obviously. This will be set to a uh, keyboard, I believe, by default. So what you're going to want to do is just go down and select your Xbox controller. And then there you go. Your inputs will all be registered. You don't need to do anything else. You can set up multiple players here as well. So you can connect your controllers and then you can set up which input device you want to be that player. So if you want to play multiplayer games, you can go, okay, buddy wants to play on keyboard. Or if you have another wireless Xbox controller, you can set up more Xbox controllers to act as Joy-Cons or whatever. Uh, whatever controllers you have. And you can have up to eight in here. Uh, very, There is very few games that will take up to eight, but there is a couple. Um... And then, yeah, so for console mode, I would leave it in docked as well uh, because it's just a 1080p image on 1080p device, so why not? Um, if you are getting worse performance, do consider uh, putting it down to handheld and see if that helps. But generally, in my case, it, it doesn't really make too much of a difference performance-wise, to be honest, on the handhelds. Um, so, yeah, that's Yuzu all set up there, and then we'll get into Ryujinx. And then honestly, it's a very similar process for Ryujinx. So what you're going to want to do is hit, uh, sorry, hit file and then go to open Ryujinx folder and that'll bring us here. And then you're going to want to just go to system and then you're going to want to copy over the uh, keys over into this folder as well. So same as the Ryujinx, it's just called system instead of keys. Now, the only thing that's different is installing your firmware. So the firmware is a zip folder that you're going to want to have or an XCI full, uh, file, because you can install the firmware off of a game as well, I believe. Um, but if you have the firmware, and again, these, I can't show you where to get these, but they're super simple to find. Like, it'll slap you right in the face if you punch it in Google, honestly. Um, so going over here and then installing from a zip, uh, I've got this on my desktop here. Uh, where is it? Desktop and then firmware 16. So we'll do it here. We'll do the full process. So it'll come up saying install firmware 16. Yes, this will replace my current version, which I already have. Do you want to continue? Yes. Install. Successfully installed. And then it's good practice to restart this as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it for Ryujinx. Like, there's not too much to do. Um, I'll get into, like, doing uh, updates and cheats and everything per game as well. Uh, we'll go back to Yuzu as well. So to install cheats or mods for Yuzu, it's super simple. All you're going to want to do is right-click on your game, and then you're going to want to hit Open Mod Data Location. As well, just to point out, there is this Open Save Data Location here, so if you want to copy your saves or transfer a save over, that's where you do it as well. But to get back to the mod, so you just open mod data location, and then you just grab your mods from wherever you find them. So a game banana, GBA temp, uh, just check on Reddit, like type in whatever game you're looking for, and then just type in 60 FPS mod Reddit or something, and I guarantee you'll find something. Um, so that's where you're going to put all the folders, and that's where you're going to just have all of the uh, mods there. And that's where the cheats go as well. There's no differentiating between cheats and mods for this. It's just straight up there. And then what you're going to want to do to go to properties here, and then this is where all of the mods and everything will be. So this is where you can tick them on and off as you like, and then this is where you can also get into the individual game setting graphics, or uh graphics and cpu options my apologies and then also to get to the uh the sorry my apologies um <clears throat> time uh title update <laughs> sorry so to install title updates uh what you have to do is to go to file and then go install files to nand 
So this is going to install your uh, game updates. So again, I can't show you where to get these game updates, but they're super simple to find. There's various websites, just check on Reddit. I believe there's a database on uh, GitHub, I believe somewhere. Um, but yeah, so if you go and f have your update, whatever, then you just click, okay, it's gonna be an NSP file. And then you just click there, hit open, and then it'll install to here, I'm not going to fully install, but this is what it'll look like. So I'll say, okay, this is your Astral Chain update 1.0.1. Uh, do you want to install? Hit install, and then it'll install. I'm not going to bother because I already have. But then you'll see here that once you do have that installed, you just go to properties for that game. And then we can see here, this is where the update is. So you can disable the update if you don't want to run 1.0.1 anymore. Um, if you want to downgrade the update, whatever. And then, yeah. That's how you do that on Yuzu. There's really nothing else too much to it. Um, yeah, like there's there's other settings here that you can tool around with, but that's I wouldn't really do too much with them. The main settings that you're going to want to focus in are going to be in advanced graphics, really. These are going to be your main settings that you're going to want to try and change on and off to see if you can get any sort of performance difference. Then going back over to Ryujinx, it's a very similar process. All you do is right click and then hit uh, open mods directory. And then same thing, you just copy over your mods into here. And I'll post the, uh, the actual file to get to, uh, the file link to get to the mods. It's gonna be in your app data folder under your users. So you're gonna have to unhide your uh, hidden folders. So to do that, when you're in File Explorer, Explorer, hit the three dot menu, go down to Options, and then go over to View, and then hit Show Hidden Folders, Files, and Drives. And then that will show uh, your app data folder when you're in Users under your uh, local login user. But yeah, so this is where you add in your mods and stuff, and then you go over, same sort of thing, you do Manage uh, DLC. Um, if you do have DLC or mods, then you can do it in there. Uh, that's how you do the updates. And then to manage title updates, same thing. So you have to, if you want to add the title update, you go down to add and then same idea. You add your NSP, uh, update file. And then you can see here, yep, this is the location of my NSP update file. And there we go. And then you can save that. And then finally, to actually get to the mods now, sorry, uh, manage cheats is what it's called. Uh, so the mods are cheats, so you just go in here and then enable them as you see fit there. And yeah, there's really not much else to this one either. Um, we'll go into the, the control options as well to set up for this. Uh, so if you go into settings and then input, all you have to do is go to player one or whichever one you're configuring and then hit configure, hit the input device that you want it to be and then change it over to whatever control type you want. So you can have a Joy-Con pair, you can have a pro controller, you can have left, whatever you want. Uh, but I would recommend doing the pro controller and then what you will have to do is input these all manually. So you have to click on A and then, okay, hit A on the Xbox controller or the ROG Ally controller. Um, and then just go down and actually input your inputs manually. Uh, on Yuzu, I believe it was auto set up the first time, so you shouldn't have to, but this is where you can enable uh, motion controls when we get those eventually officially. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, there is multiplayer. I'll be honest, I've not really tooled around with multiplayer on the emulators, mainly because I don't really have a reason to. Um, I know there is communities out there that do it um, more <clears throat> like internally and stuff. And it's a bunch of like kind of like minded people like, oh, yeah, let's get together and play Mario Kart or trade Pokemon or whatever. Um, uh, that is kind of beyond the scope of this video though. Um, to my knowledge, you have to set up like a basically a virtual LAN um, so that you emulate being locally together over the internet basically. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll maybe do that in a separate video once I actually figure out how to do it myself because I've not actually ever tried to. I'm sure it's not hard, but it's beyond the scope of this video. But that'll do it for this one. If you guys need any help with anything, let me know in the comments. Um, I do have a Discord now that I'm kind of like unofficially launching. So I'll leave that in the comments as well. So if you guys need help with anything, just message me in there. And I'll be able to help you out in there as well. But beyond that, I hope everyone has a great day.